Hello, Namaste and Salaam to all our viewers today. I, Shivalika, will be your host along with Mr. Naveen Thakur, co-host and Mr. Lokesh Vashish for technical support. We will be jointly uh, hosting today's session. A warm welcome to all of you on the world of marketing. WM is a community of marketing stalwarts across the globe. WM is present on all social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. And to have a better connection and communication between the members across the seven com uh, continents, we are using WhatsApp groups for re regional chapters. WM was started by Mr. Ami, uh, Mr. Ashish Singh and Mr. Dinesh Mahajan mm -hmm. in the year 2016 to build a platform for marketing community. Today, we are live on FB with Power Pack panelists who are here with us uh, with their awesome business strategies. I am confident that these strategies will surely help us to face the challenges thrown at us by COVID-19. If you have any queries, please post them on the comments section and we will cover them during Q&A round. Let me introduce you to our esteemed panelists. Our first panelist for the day is Dr. Anvita Prabhakara, VP Marketing and Strategy and Business, ex Aditya Birla, Castrol India and Z Networks. Dr. Anvita Prabhakara is a software engineer, MBA marketing, and doctorate in alternate medicine from UK. She is also a third degree black belt in combat arts. Known for being the business turnarounder in crisis, Dr. Anvita, with her 16 years experience, has worked with Fortune 300 MNCs with 400 crore budgets, as well as with startups with zero budgets, thus quadrupling businesses and winning multiple global accolades. Dr. Anvita is on the board of multiple men mentorship programs and is invited all over as speaker and panelist at prestigious marketing business conclaves and IITs and IMs. Welcome, Dr. Anvita. Thank you. Our second Thank panelist, you. our second panelist is Dr. Islam Gora. Dr. Is, uh, Dr. Gora has an honorary doctorate from the University of California in Strategic Marketing and a graduate from the American University of Sharjah and Wollongong in Dubai in Marketing. With a strong analytical mind of maneuvering businesses to newer heights, he is a specialist in leadership and communication development. Having a strong success track record, Dr. Gora has ingeniously planned and executed marketing mix for both consumer as well as enterprise segments. A business strategist by heart, mind, and soul, he has changed the game plan of business development, marketing, and product development purposes. Welcome, Dr. Gora. Hi, welcome. Now I would like, like to request Mr. Naveen to take over the session. Naveen, all yours. Thank you, Shivalika. Hello and Namaste, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Uh, uh, let me welcome Dr. Anvita and Dr. Islam Gora to Comcast today. And today we are here to discuss the topic turning crisis into opportunity. Okay, uh, as a professional, I remember in very young age, one of my bosses told me that crisis is the time when you know your real self come out, your best can come out during those times, and you should take it as an opportunity. And trust me, from that day, I have been a firm believer of that uh, saying, and it, it comes out true every time. So here we are to discuss this unique situation again that we all are in. Uh, COVID-19 has put, put us all here together. Uh, I will uh, request uh, Shivalika to ask, uh, you know, Dr. Anvita about her view. Sure. Uh, so uh, let us start with the session today. And uh, if this question is for Dr. Anvita. Uh, can you please tell us about how business outlook will change after this ongoing pandemic? So how will the businesses' strategies and uh, their working strategies, their marketing strategies, all will all as a as a whole industry, how will it change? Got you, Shivalika. First of all, uh, thank you to World of Marketing. It's a wonderful platform, and uh, I know we've been working on it for the last four years. I've been aware of the team's activities. So thank you for inviting me and Dr. Islam to this webinar. Um, there are a lot of questions in what you asked, uh, Shivalika. You asked about the change in business outlook, the change in marketing, the change, I could, I could add to that, change in consumer behavior also. Yes. So we go one by one and then you know we can see how to proceed with the conversation. Business outlook in view of the current crisis, the current COVID crisis has definitely changed. Um, but we have seen similar uh, you know, scenarios, similar crisis in the past. 
and it's not an all or a, it's not a one zero uh, binary game it's definitely not an all more or small loss situation uh, it's just that now businesses will have to gear up for faster uh, uh, turnaround times businesses will have to look at their business models uh, they will resource becomes very important resource in the in terms of money in terms of people in terms of processes all of these become very important uh, also i think there is there is a need to revisit and realign the strategy plans that were made in the initial part of the year be it a one year plan be it a three or a five year plan uh, obviously companies big small uh, medium size will all have to revisit it um we're also looking at probably uh, you know uh, reworking and playing around with the the business cost models uh, you know probably invest a little more in the variable cost or move our money to the variable cost uh, reduce our fixed costs see what we can do in the process changes agility flexibility faster i think these are various terms that are not going to be just terms anymore they are going to be the the order of the day um, and, and also uh, in, in terms of how the consumer also reacts to what the business is telling them all of these kind of you know in in a nutshell we can put it in this format ah that's nice well put uh, dr ran uh dr islam would you like to yes. uh, hear your perspective you also on on the topic how do you turn this crisis into opportunity first of all i'd like to thank uh, the frontline heroes and this uh, covid-19 circumstance uh, and all the doctors uh, in the medical field and the nurses and uh, the countries that we live in and we act to the current situation uh thank you very much all of them uh they are taking care of us they are taking care of the people they are trying to uh, make our life at ease and they are trying to make everybody's life better uh thank you for answering the question i think that the organizations uh would be much more flat in terms of uh their hierarchy first of all the hierarchies would change so there will not be any kind of uh uh managers or management level uh employees who has a different uh, set of um or people under them to be working under them it will be a flat organization reporting to the core or the uh the um, at the top of the organization and uh, second of all i think that um companies will be able to uh invest more into the online and digital medium uh, than they have invested before uh, there are companies who fortunately enough have been in the uh, online business for a long time and they have been doing so greatly and uh, the online business was for them something for us as a customer it was luxury but now it's uh, a necessity so i think uh, online medium would be something uh, that will take a uh, very much uh, uh, over all the type of transactions that will be in the in the short term and the future term uh, for business transactions additionally i think that uh, uh, companies would be able to uh, collaborate more uh, not work in isolation there will the competition model uh, which is the leader follower and uh, and market leader and this model will be obsolete i don't think that companies will be a market leader market follower i think that they will be uh, a model where all 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 the companies will collaborate will come together uh, in order for them to support each other financially and in order for them to support each other in terms of customer base as well uh, so i think uh companies will not be working as differently as from each other they will combine and they will not in an acquisition way but in a collaborative way in business terms and marketing terms so this is my insight as a as a starter on this uh, topic great great point dr gora you know both uh, thank you both for sharing your point of view on this topic uh, as dr anvika pointed out agility and flexibility are not going to be just words they are going to be the way forward in the industry very well put 
and Dr. Islam said digital and online are going to be the way forward, uh, where, where businesses will have to look at. Synergy, collaborativeness, absolutely brilliant points. Uh, we thank you for this, these points. Uh, these are some brilliant uh, you know, pointers that you have put. Uh, let's let's move to some question and answers and I would want Shivalika, you know, if you have questions to start with. Yes, um, we have a few questions uh, with uh, from Kanika Nanda Kohli. Uh, she is asking uh, Dr. Islam as well as Dr. Anvita. I uh, would like to you uh, be more explicit about the business opportunities in the given scenario uh, when the brand marketers are not willing to spend due to revenue dip. That's a nice question. Sure. Uh, so I think it's a very valid question. It's a valid concern considering that marketing is usually seen as a cost center uh, in the traditional way of uh, doing business. Uh, this can We can look at this crisis one in, in a nervous format or one as looking at it as an opportunity. Uh, marketing now, as marketeers or as salespeople, we have to put our marketing hats on. We put our executive hats on. Uh, we also, it, what, how it changes is that uh, we become more relevant to the business. We work very closely with the CEO, very closely with the CFOs. Um, all the teams will have to work in tandem. Um, costs have to be uh, you know, always revenue generation has to be uh, aligned and cost and revenue generation always has to be aligned. There is also the the fact that marketers uh, or the job of the marketer is not any more limited uh, to communication. It is now going to be larger than just communication. Also, uh, one needs to take into consideration both the long term and the short term effects how a brand survives in, in this short term, how a brand survives in the long term, all of that needs to be taken into consideration. Uh, in terms of revenue dip, surely it's not, again, like I say, it's not it's not going to immediately translate into companies are not going to jump and just cut marketing budgets. It doesn't work that way. There is always a long-term view that is seen. We should not be having any knee-jerk reactions. But of course, uh, there is efficacy for every every penny that's spent. So as long as we can communicate, as long as we can convince uh, with logic to the leaders or to the uh, decision makers that, you know, that every penny spent is getting its value for its money, uh, marketing budgets or marketing the future of the brands in this particular scenario is not going to go out of context. Dr. Gorda, on, on similar lines, you know, uh, while uh, digital, as you also mentioned, that digital is going to be the way forward because there's being a cost effective media. However, how, how much do you think that organizations are going to be conservative in going on spending uh, compared to what they were doing earlier in the next three to six months? Uh, I think uh, the role of marketing has changed uh, with this pandemic. Uh, marketing is not about creating awareness anymore. It's about uh, relating to the people. It's about empathy. It's about uh, uh, corporate social responsibility. So I think in my opinion, the role of marketing, we are as marketeers are responsible for the community that we are working on. And CSR used to be part of marketing. Now it's the main focus of marketing. And I think in my opinion that the only sole purpose of marketing at this moment in any organization is to provide support to the community that we are living in. Uh, companies are being tested nowadays and individuals in the corporate culture are being tested nowadays with their, how they would react to the pandemic and how would they be able to uh, support the, the, organize the, the culture and support the community that we are living in. So uh, in order to, to pass in this test, we need to uh, prove that we are able and apt to support the community that we are living to and in and supporting each other uh, in a way that we provide uh, uh, giveaways, we provide uh, medical support to the, the, the medical staff. Uh, I think the role of marketing has shifted totally from being a cost center solely to being a supporter of the community that we are living in, so that's my in, that that's my input. That's my intake on into this 
So it's not about decreasing the budget of marketing, which would help. It's investing in the community that we are living in. Marketing is not uh, about creating promotions, billboards, radio ads, and uh, TV ads. Nowadays, marketing is supporting the community. And this is the major and main role of marketing nowadays, in my opinion. I would like to add, uh, marketing, at least in the current pandemic, both in the short term and in the long term, needs to be a lot more responsible. Um, we cannot be opportunistic, both as a marketer or as a company or as a business. Now is the time when we convince our consumers that we are there with them. Now is the time when, again, communication becomes very important. And then, of course, driving home the point, marketing also uh, will now not be limited to, let's say, one medium, be it the new digital or be it the old traditional models. It is going to be omnichannel. It is going to be all over integrated kind of a marketing. And uh, the touch points would be multiple. And the marketing team, as per se, should have, should have to work very closely with all the stakeholders, be it you know, the supply chain, be it the sales, be it the finance. I think the communication is, is, is going to be a lot more faster, a lot more uh, inclusive. And only then is how we, and it's not just internal stakeholders, it's also external stakeholders. Uh, at the end of the day, what we're doing as an organization, what we're doing as a company, if we are able to convince that, sorry, convey that to our consumers, uh, and an and, and honest, uh, you know, honest uh, uh, conveyance of messages, uh, honest conveyance of things that we're doing for them, uh, you know, we make a lot of sense. Uh, for instance, just as I was driving to today's webinar, I got a message from the Yorkshire group, the car hospitality group of hotels, where, uh, you know, they upfront spoke about uh, uh, one of their employees being tested positive. And uh, they could have very well hidden this. But I think it spoke volumes about the integrity of the company when they, you know, rose up and they sent out a message to all their patrons saying that we will be closed indefinitely till this employee is uh, cured. So I think uh, when, you know, the role, like, like Dr. Islam says, the role of marketing is, is no more limited to promotions. It is a lot more than that. We're pretty much the dri business drivers. You know, and it's always been the case, but it even becomes more imperative right now. I also want to add something as well. Like uh, the problem is that customers have shifted into their protective mode. Like uh, they are in a protective mode right now. They are unable to receive any kind of messaging that the marketing community or the marketing uh, department or the marketing any kind of communication that's being dispatched by a marketeer is currently blocked by the circumstance at the moment. So in order for us to be able to communicate with the current marketing uh, messaging that we have, we need to be supportive as much as supportive to the community as well, to be able to crack that protective mode that they are in, in order for us to be able to reach and uh, to extend our help. Uh, it's, our mission now is not to make money. That's simple. Uh, a time of making money, uh, companies who have made money and they are uh, able to make it and they have made money and they are well prepared to, uh, to the pandemic, they are well prepared and better off. Unfortunately, there are companies who their debt was much more higher than uh, profit or growth uh, profit uh, for their business like Hertz for example one of the businesses that's closing right now uh, a pioneer in the car rental industry like JC Penney, a hundred and eighteen years company that's been operating in the US is now um, uh, uh, declaring bankruptcy because of uh, of debt these companies did not prepare because we don't study in a SWOT analysis when you do a SWOT analysis of the threats we don't put pandemic in threats this is the thing but companies who have uh, uh, a better bookkeeping uh, shall we say uh, are able to survive this pandemic in a in a time of not making money but living on the on the on the uh, profits that we have already made so that we can get through this together and spend on uh, on the marketing community, spend on the uh, on the com sorry on the community itself, and spend on the people and uh, help support the governments that we work with. 
so it's it's more time to empathize with the situation with the people rather than going and pushing your message to or trying to do push sales yes uh, good good point uh, dr gora uh, uh, we we have another no, question you know i can't hear a single word you're saying Absolutely. No, no worries. Uh, no worries. Shivali guy is going to take care of that. We have a question from Rakhi Puri and uh, Dr. Gowda. If you can uh, take it up, how advertising media agencies will manage the crisis given the current situation? Media budgets are the biggest cut any brand is planning. So, as you know, everyone is talking that marketing budgets are the first one which gets chopped off. Uh, in those scenarios, how media agencies are going to manage their scenarios? Would you like to take the lead, Dr. Bharvita? I didn't hear the question at all. Uh, can can we have the question? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, the question is uh, how advertising media agencies will manage the crisis given the current situation. Media budgets are the biggest cut any brand is planning. This question is from uh, Mr. Akhi Bhuri. Right. So because uh, yeah, no, please. Right. Yeah, please continue. Yeah. Sure. So uh, obviously, when you look from the lens of Uh, when you wear the hat of the media agency, uh, this is an immediate or an impending worry that you know probably all uh, brands are just going to simply cut their media budgets. However, this may not be the case. This uh, brands uh, brands are not like I said before. We're not going to take knee jerk reactions uh, that will harm us in the long term or in the short term. Uh, that said, yes, there might be a media budget redistribution. So if 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 uh, a particular brand was spending ten bucks previously, uh, just for purpose of argument, they might they might reduce it to nine. They won't go zero. And now how they reallocate that nine uh, across various platforms, across rather uh, better touch points. Now that uh, you know, now with this entire health, safety, uh, and social distancing coming in the picture, and it's not going to go for a long time, uh, in a good way. So home is the new consumption point. which means that you know the, the the customer needs to be reached at home so home stops being only a nesting or a relaxation point home also becomes a shopping point so you know agencies uh, will have to look at agencies first of all will have to work with businesses like i mentioned right in the beginning like how the marketing team or the cmo has to work very closely with the ceo and the cfo similarly the agencies the media agencies the digital agencies all of the agencies will also have to work closely with their respective brands with the respective organizations to to bring about value for money that they are uh, you know that they are going to be suggesting and it's not all doom it's not uh, it's not that digital is the only way forward if we all notice at least in this entire lockdown period tv is the new way uh, also is on the way up uh, there is digital there is social media and uh, you know a very efficient and very uh, you know thought through media spends is something that we can look towards uh, and obviously anything that does not give us value for money anything that does not justify the roi of the money being spent or the money being asked is obviously going to be deleted from the media spends So you know, uh, a, a well thought through plan is is I think that will save the buck. Yeah. Doctor Gorda, you just mentioned about you know that how uh, businesses who have earned profit they should survive uh, on those profits and all. Here's the next question for you from Parichay, who says that what would be the strategy for the startups to survive in current situation? While the earlier companies have enjoyed on profit, what do these startups do? uh unfortunately for a startup uh, this is not the right time to uh flourish they can make money out of modifying their business models for example if we build them a startup business model on hiring people then we are better off on uh the freelance model so if we have a the startup uh, for example the time to go to the market please and try to make some money first of all we need to understand the market situation at hand then what kind of support that we can give uh diversify our business in a way that uh, can support the essential services that being taken out away uh, change our business models from the hierarchy based to the uh, free market and uh, uh, cut on the marketing spend 
and invest more into product development and diversification of the product. So in order for me as a startup, uh, I have to monitor the situation that I'm working in. I need to understand what kind of business model that can flourish, that will support the current situation that I'm in. I need to save money. I need to uh, understand um, how my employees are going to work, uh, from which countries, and, and this is the perfect time for startups to think of the freelance business model. Th that's the most perfect for than in a legacy business. Legacy businesses, they depend on employees being yeah. present being, and being there. But startups, they, they can flourish through the advocacy of uh, having freelancers working for them, cutting on salaries and cutting on different types of uh, expenditure. So basically, uh, uh, we, we yes, please, please, Dr. Anvita. No, please carry on, Shivanika. I'll, I'll no, I was just adding adding to it that uh, basically we need to change our business models during this pandemic and accordingly we should look forward to it, right? Yeah. It's again mm. uh, like a, yeah, again like I say, it could mm. not be necessarily an immediate or an immediate knee-jerk kind of a change in business model, be okay. it for established organizations or companies or brands or like the question that's being asked for entrepreneurs. Uh, it, it needs to be seen, everything needs to be seen in the big picture context, uh, but yes, like uh, we just discussed, for the entrepreneurs, cash liquidity becomes very important. Uh, you know, number of resources that they kind of need to put is also definitely you know something that needs to be looked at. And uh, there is another point that you know that one can take into consideration for the entrepreneurs, which is that uh, let's assume in their life cycle of the company development uh, development. Uh, they probably factored in arranging for cash or arranging for capital much later in the stage, in the life stage. Uh, now probably is the time that, you know, they can arrange for it, speak to investors, uh, pitch their idea, because it's not always, cash is not always going to be available. Pandemics just randomly arrive, you know, trouble is never going to announce itself. So if you, if as an entrepreneur, I have put off arranging for capital or meeting with investors, let's say for two years ahead from now, uh, you know, you can probably bring the discussion earlier now. And of course, at the end of the day, uh, you know, your business needs to meet a certain uh, sense and, and the business needs to fulfill a particular consumer need. Only then will investors and, uh, you know, uh, capital investors will definitely invest in your business. We have the next question from Sudesh Verma. Yeah, uh, the question is, uh, once the market opens, how can marketing also become a revenue generator? Since revenue generation will be absolutely critical after this pandemic. So uh, what is your take on it, uh, Dr. Anvita? Uh, so I think uh, here again, uh, this, this again refers to this, the, this alludes to the point that we made some time back that, uh, you know, there's going to be a short term and there's going to be a long term implication for every business, for every organization, for every team in the business. So once uh, what we need to understand and what we've seen from history, uh, even in the past, is that ultimately we're all creatures of habit. So while there is a certain change, there is a certain awareness of safety, health, towards hygiene sectors and all of that, at the end of the day, the consumer is not going to shift loyalties so quickly. Uh, he is going to be a, a person of his habit. He is probably going to go back to his favorite brand. So in, in that context, uh, you know, in the short term, if marketing holds hands with this consumer, with this consumer, with his customers, and is there and not as an opportunistic marketer, but or in, as, as an opportunity brand, but uh, letting him know that he's there with him, and of course, making his products available, uh, you know, at whichever platform, offline, online, at home, wherever that the consumer requires. So once these things are taken care of, then as a consumer, I'm going to stick to my loyalties. And I'm going to go back to, you know, uh, you know, if, if there's, there's something called a discretionary need and a supply and an essential need. So obviously in the short term, my essential shopping will be more, my discretionary shopping will be largely cut back. 
uh, but you know, probably after the pandemic and after markets have kind of stabilized, after my you know revenues are in place, marketing can definitely you know uh, you know once we've proved ourselves uh, you know in, in in handling this current pandemic situation, once we've proved ourselves to the organization also that you know revenue will not be lost, and that the revenue can be generated. Obviously, the belief and the faith also will come back, and you know market. Marketing will definitely get more uh, revenues, and we can of course improve our communication. We can improve the things that we do, the various touch points that we do. So it, it's really not a grim situation as I see it, and as we've seen in the past also. Uh, be it the uh, you know, be it after in India after emergency, be it Japan kind of uh, re reviving itself after the you know bombs, uh, the Hiroshima thing, or even closer home. The way we recovered after the Y2K, or the way India recovered, uh, you know, during the uh, SARS and all of that. So it truly really is not a grim situation. But yes, we have to be mindful of you know short term and long term uh, differences in the strategies. I just have a, a an input on this. Uh, first of all, uh, revenue generation it's a sales function rather than a marketing function. So. Most people confuse the marketing function and the sales fun function, and marketing should generate revenue. Marketing should generates return on marketing investment through me, not return on investment. That's the first point. The second point, the, 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 the minute the pandemic is over, people will not be looking to generate money. People will be looking to understanding the mindsets that are there that has been changing. Everything now is a question. Everything now is, is, is something that we question and is something that we don't understand. The first time that happens, uh, something like this, like the, when the Ebola happened, it took place uh, on a very small scale. When, when small, when small uh, uh, pandemic happened, it took place on small scales, they are not all over the world, not impacting that much of people. But now everybody is at home. Everybody is at home and everybody is questioning the state of mind that we are in. People now has been affected mentally, has been affected healthy, uh, on health uh, terms, have been affected on different types of terms. So we need to understand what kind of mentality these people are, uh, are, are, have developed during the lockdown, during the long distance uh, between the brand and the company, between the long distance between the people. So we need to understand, we don't need to generate money right after the pandemic directly. We need to understand the mindsets of the people. We need to reshape the whole market dynamics. We need to reshape the whole market uh, mentality, that the, how people react to the brand, how people communicate with the brand. We need to reshape how we, uh, as a brand, uh, talk even with our customers. We need to understand different studies needs to be done right after the pandemic, not... not, uh, not uh, 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 revenue generation. Dr. Islam, uh, I think we have a we have a different viewpoint over here. Uh, what you what you, what you did say was right some time back, where marketing is not necessarily a revenue generator, but an ROI of the revenue, and it's the sales job. But going forward, and even with the current scenario that's happening, marketing ceases to not be a revenue generator. Marketing, and that's exactly what I said some time back, that marketing has to work very closely. And now it's more imperative that marketing is the business driver. And marketing and sales, while are different functions, it is not anymore. Uh, in fact, even before the pandemic, let's not only take the pandemic as a reason, but even before the pandemic, in a lot of organizations that I have worked, it is, uh, it, Mark, mark, the role of marketing is not is, is not not a revenue generator. It definitely is a revenue generator. Yes, of course, on the field it is the, our sales team. It is our very vibrant uh, uh, you know strategies that we put in place. But marketing is definitely a revenue generator, and uh, it is, the need for this becomes even more stronger after this pandemic. Uh, otherwise, we are just going to be viewed as a cost center, and that uh, is not that something that we would look at. Dr. Arvita, there are some organizations who put two two different departments together, like they put marketing and they put sales. Like the, oh, yeah. the, there are organizations, the head of marketing is the same as the head of sales. So the thing, what I'm what, what I'm saying is, in an organization where there's sales and marketing uh, together, both differently work on the same level, 
Uh, yes. Marketing is not the revenue generator. The sales is the revenue generator. But yes. if we consider marketing as the holistic uh, science, then sales comes up under under marketing, and uh, it, it's a marketing supports the sales and the sales funnel and the sales function. So um, if we think about it, some some organizations they support each other in terms of departmental support. And some organizations have these two departments together. So what I'm saying is most of the organization, they don't have these departments together. So they have sales and they have marketing. That's why I'm saying that marketing is not a revenue generator by itself. Uh, you're right, uh, you're right Dr. Islam. Uh, but I'm not referring to the organization where yeah. the head of marketing is also the head of sales. I am referring definitely to organizations where it is marketing and sales is two different teams as just as supply chain and you know procurement and finance and all of them are individual uh, teams but the point I'm making is that all of them have to work closer together and uh, if marketing remains only an enabler which I agree with you in certain organizations marketing is a supporting function but in a lot of industries, in a lot of organizations, marketing is not a, only a support function. It is actually the business driver. It is actually the annual strategy and the business strategy maker. So, uh, you know, I'm sure what you're saying does exist in a few organizations, but a large number of organizations today do not really demarket them. And marketing has to be, uh, you know, a lot more relevant. In fact, I remember reading uh, a recent article on LinkedIn, or, or I think by AC Nielsen, I'm not sure by whom, but where they were questioning the role of the CMO and, uh, you know, is it relevant anymore if, he, if he's, if his, you know, if his KPI is going to be limited to only communication, if his, uh, you know, if his KPI is going to be limited to, let's say, you know, uh, checking the ROI or checking the various uh, platforms that he needs to go on and the various media channels, uh, you know, so, and then the, the article ended with saying, that CMO role going forward uh, will be very relevant if he is CMO and he is a person who is going to be working very closely with the money part of it. So it's not, we're not, uh, I think companies are, especially after this uh, pandemic, companies are definitely going to move towards making marketing also not just a support function, but a very, very keen uh, and a key business driver. So, yeah, I'm sure what you're saying in certain organizations might still be the case, but uh, no, going forward, we'll obviously have to be looking into it. It's more about how which organization structure, how they are uh, designed. Next, let's move on to the next question. There are very interesting questions. Uh, there's a question from Gopal Mishra. He says, since brands are cutting, uh, you know, the, their media budget, it is right time for small competitors to market and advertise beyond their limits to reach more and more people. Uh, you know, again, it comes to the question that what, what should I do? Uh, so, because most part of the world is under lockdown, and people are more at home browsing online and advertising costs um, are also low comparatively. So, uh, you know, if competition, which are large players, are not putting in money, would it be advisable for those small players and small competition uh, player to pump in the money? Dr. Gora, you can start and then Shivali can take it with Yes, of course. Dr. Islam, please go. Yeah, okay. So I think this is the best time for small competitors to uh, to uh, be able to function. Why? Because the big, big legacy companies are unable to move very quickly in the current fast, um, uh, fast uh, forward moving uh, dynamics uh, of the market. Um, small businesses uh, and competitors would be able to provide an agile uh, kind of response to the pandemic uh, in a way that uh, they achieve their targets where, because they are very small targets they have to achieve. At the same time, they are able to maneuver and adapt to the current market situation and the pandemic. So if you think about it, uh, businesses like um, Amazon and, um, and uh, Microsoft and all of these big companies, when they operate, if there is a market competitor at the moment, which is very small, he will be able to take a very big cut of the marketplace because uh, the, these businesses, uh, they have to take approvals on different kind of, uh, different kind of uh, initiatives. They have to take a different kind of uh, uh, 
business uh, decisions, different uh, different people are taking the decision in the company. Uh, the decision has been uh, uh, must be studied. So competitors, this is the best time for business competitors and small competitors to operate. Because, uh, as I said before, uh, they are more agile and more, uh, they have the capability to maneuver in the marketplace much more faster and quicker than any of the big uh, big uh, so, Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. I was asking the same thing uh, to Dr. Anvita. Yes, can you just keep the question on, please? Yeah, the uh, question is from uh, Mr. Gopal Mishra. Since brands are cutting their media budget, is this the right time for small competitors to market or advertise beyond their limits to reach people? Because most of the world is under lockdown and people are, mo are more at home and browsing online advertising costs are also low comparatively. Right. So there are two parts to this question. It's a very nice question, Mr. Gopal. Uh, and there are two parts to this question. And it's, it's almost like a 2A, 2B, 1A, 1B. The question will be answered differently for larger companies, for larger brands who have the wherewithal, who have the resources. And the question is going to be different for smaller uh, players in the market. Uh, at the end of the day, it's if the consumer is getting what he wants, either from his original uh, loyal larger brand that he was getting or he's going to get it from the smaller brands uh, that is that is what makes all the difference point number one point number two is is also the fact that yes it is true that uh, online budgets are i mean digital budgets are definitely value for money they are lesser and yes like i mentioned some time back home is the new uh, you know consumption point so a lot of a lot of uh, budgets are going to be spent on the digital medium on entertainment on uh, various ways to reach the customer at the home uh, that said does it mean that the big brands are going to lose out no definitely not uh, there are various ways that we can look at it if the big players combine hands with the small players that's another thing um, should the smaller players just bleed themselves to death because this no, that's not a great. Uh, you know that that definitely, definitely the smaller entrepreneurs, uh, smaller big brands is 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 not. Uh, you know they should not kind of just bleed themselves. But of course, look at uh, reaching the customer at different points. There's also another thing when you say marketing budget, it's definitely not only media budgets. It's also the budgets that they can invest. Uh, and this I'm speaking for in terms of the smaller players. Uh, in terms of packaging, in terms of the communication that they are making to the consumers, if they if they speak or if they let the consumer know, uh, you know that this is the safety measures that we're taking. This is how, let's say, in the food business, this is how your food is reaching you. Uh, then th then that's that's also money well spent. Uh, you know, money does not need to be only spent on communication. Money needs to also be spent on processes. Money needs to be spent wisely uh, and very and very robustly. So that also makes a huge difference. Uh, that's nicely answered, uh, Dr. Ranbita. So the next question, Naveen, please. Yes, you can take it, Chiran. Yeah, uh, so it's, uh, it's from Mr. Dilip Kumar. Uh, it's for both Dr. Anvita and Dr. Islam. How companies will be encouraged in terms of strategic marketing investments taking into stock their financial structure post-COVID-19 situation? So it's about the strategies that the marketing uh, department will be taking up after the COVID-19. I think the question is larger than just the marketing team. The question yeah. is, uh, you know, I think for overall the organization. Um, Please uh, let me know if, 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 if my understanding is not right. Um, so first of all, I think, uh, yes, the markets have plummeted. Yes, the stock prices have fallen. Yes, Sensexes all over the world uh, are just going downhill. But again, like we allude to what has happened in the past, uh, be it, like Dr. Islam said, be it whether it's a small uh, crisis or whether it's a large world pandemic kind of scenario, we've always seen markets stabilizing, let's say, after a period of two quarters, three quarters. So in that context, uh, should, you know, the first thing, uh, be, it, you know, be it as a marketer or be it as a business uh, leader or as a company, what we need to, you know, first realize is that we don't panic and we do not always associate the falling stock prices or the falling stock markets 
as the final uh, you know declaration on on our business it is definitely not because markets are always volatile markets are always crashing markets are always rising markets are recovering so uh, like i said previously nothing that we need to do uh, you know nothing that we do should be a need of kind of a reaction and uh, it is definitely going to be it is definitely going to be uh, uh, you know uh, stabilizing after the covid situation and uh, again uh, it, it all boils back down to the same thing that there has to be uh, you know value for every fund penny that's spent and uh, there shouldn't be any uh, decisions that we take in panic there shouldn't be any decisions that we you know just uh, you know look at the finance market the financial markets well they are an indication of current times but they're definitely not an indication of the overall big picture of how a consumer's uh, attitude a consumer's lifestyle a consumer's behavior will definitely change or not change or how a particular company big or small needs to react so financial markets while we have to take the indices into con into consideration they are not the entire picture and hence panic is not the key driver great so we have quite a lot of questions and we are running out of time i will take you have questions quickly uh, uh is it really nice to see uh, see i will come to the questions straight away as many companies like vip and safari and some more have started production of branded masks these now so basically you this question is trying to say that diversifying from your core business and bringing in new innovation Innovation is good. Uh, what is your point of view on this? That how can company should they diversify and innovate into new product lines, or should they continue with where they are? Can I take this question, Dr. Amita? Yes. 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 Uh, basically, companies, as I said before, the the business models have changed, and uh, we are now in a state of support to the governments that we are working with, and we are in a state of support to the people. So I think that uh, the diversification that the companies are now doing, like Ferrari is producing uh, ventilators, Tesla with producing ventilators, uh, many different companies are producing. This is the part of the role they understand about their uh, their 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 kind of supporting the the market and they're kind of supporting the uh, the community that they are living in. This is actually a marketing initiative rather than. Uh, a strategic initiative from the from the company, uh, because as marketers we have a responsibility towards the community that we are living in. Uh, we need to innovate, we need to support, we need to communicate, and we need to uh, diversify our efforts in order to support any kind of people that uh, that uh, are associated with our brand and are associated with our company. So I think that these um, interim. Uh, uh, functions that the companies are doing will not continue. It will discontinue after the pandemic. But uh, the problem is that the mentality of the pandemic itself is going to continue for a long time because the world is not going to be the same after the pandemic. Uh, everything has changed. The mentalities, the, the thinking, the drivers, the communication, everything has changed. But, uh, this, these type of activities that are currently being done by the the companies are going to take short term and then they are going to suspend after the long term pandemic is over hopefully soon okay uh, could you please uh, display the question navi yeah uh, the question is about uh, uh, what is your view on consumer electronics industry like lg sony samsung as these companies are are doing business through retail sales and online sales so what is your viewpoint on these industries to run business and make profit right uh, so in agreement with dr islam uh, a few more points to add to that um, i think as as consumers or as businesses we need to understand what is the business type that we fall into what my what i mean by that is do i fall into the essentials like food and medical and health and safety uh, or do i fall into the discretionary it's uh, like he rightly said it, it is obvious that consumer behaviors have changed um, thought processes are changing in terms we we more aligned now towards safety we now now more aligned towards stocking up on essentials because rightly said uh, we did not think about this pandemic we never thought this pandemic is going to be so big right so so essentials are definitely going to be in the in the forefront 
that said consumer electronics may not fall definitely in the essentials they would fall in the discretionary uh, type of products so you know once probably once you know let's say six seven months or nine months or a year or however long that this pandemic goes on uh, once people are settled into that once monies are in place once people's cash are in place uh, th then people are going to probably very cautiously uh, you know look forward towards the consumer electronics or sony's and the samsung of the world uh, be consumer uh, because ultimately consumer we are people of habit so uh, th this we do react we do respond to uh, changes in in the near future but uh, ultimately we go back to you know you know the, the trips that we want to take the luxuries and, and nothing's bad about it it's very good it's, it's good for all of us in the business uh, but yes in the, in the short term these companies do not fall under essentials and hence um, it would be wise for them to look at keeping in touch with their consumers uh, rather than you know looking to make a quick buck or looking to increase the uh, revenues in the near term future uh, dr gorda i understand you know your time for iftar is uh, there and uh, you know would uh, would you be able to spare 5 10 minutes more with us uh, otherwise yeah. we'll not no problem. No problem. okay no problem. thank you thank you so much for uh, being patient the next question is from Ruchika Adalka. Of course, the lockdown industry will bounce back for sure, but there are certain aspects of consumer behavior that will change irreversibly. Can you share a couple of such aspects which, which are a must for all the brands to adapt to? Yes. So, uh, the aspects that must brands as adapt to are the online medium, as I said before. Uh, people have now a concept of escapism. They are escaping from the uh, from the pandemic to the online gaming community, to um, to shows, to videos, to online online efforts and online communities. And they are sharing, and they are much more uh, willing to uh, post videos, post uh, many things online now nowadays. So. Uh, Certainly, uh, companies have to be more online, focus online than being offline. Uh, when when things come back, I'm sure, pretty much sure that uh, not all of the industries will be able to um, go back to the uh, brick and mortar model, which is selling off the street and selling off the supermarket or selling off the uh, of se selling off the shelf. Nowadays, companies are certainly going to the uh, business model, which is uh, selling online and providing much more support to people online. And I think that um, uh, one of the main uh, one of the main points is uh, like grocery, for example. Nowadays, you you push yourself to go down to the supermarket and get something, but uh, you prefer to buy things online of of, of mobile applications or of uh, of websites. So I think, in my opinion, that uh, brands have to adapt to that model. Brands have to provide more support, marketing support, in terms of the online aspect than the brick and mortar model, which we have been always used to. Very nicely put, uh, Dr. Islam. Very nicely put. Uh, the few more points, I think, there. Uh, we're talking about consumer behavior. So uh, clearly, what we all just discussed in terms of safety, health, all of them, anyways come into question uh, i mean into into practice uh, there would also be uh, you know the, the fact that uh, companies have to be available at all touch points and while uh, you know right rightfully said that you know consumers are going to be at home and it's uh, you know online models are going to uh, you know work better uh, at the end of the day i think we still uh, you know there is there is a role and there is a space and time for even the brick and the mortar, uh, maybe not in the immediate future, but definitely in the large, in the long term, one. Two, uh, because touch and feel is something at the end of the day, consumer always wants. Uh, that said, uh, there is also there is also the, the, the aspect of the searching. Let's assume I want to buy a fridge. Let's assume I want to buy a blazer. Uh, so I'm going to do my research online, but I have probably short, shortlisted to the last three options. And then uh, I might actually go to the store and find out, you know, the quality of the fridge or the various highlights of the fridge, uh, you know, the refrigerator or the, you know, the blazer. So uh, these are points that kind of come into mind. 
uh, you know, when, when one talks about the consumer behavior. And yes, uh, uh, of course, companies have to be agile. The person who reaches the consumer first uh, is going to win. It's not necessarily the, the, the company which is going to be the bigger brand or the smaller brand. It's, it's, the, it's going to be the brand which reaches the consumer first. It is going to be the brand which is going to talk safety. It is going to be the brand which uh, the, which re- fulfills a need that the consumer ne- requires, and in the fastest and the easiest and the most uh, least complicated way. And uh, we also have to take into consideration. Let's assume if you're talking about India, uh, we have the urban and the rural population. So mm-hmm. it's it's uh, everyone's a lot more savvy. Or maybe a few years before, uh, we were not as I mean the rural uh, population was not as mobile savvy, but today everyone is savvy. So, you know, all of that also takes into consideration. So I think that's the way it's going to go. We are running out of time. Uh, thank you so much to Dr. Anvita and Dr. Islam for joining us today. Uh, Shivalika, would you, you want to take the session uh, head towards uh, thanking notes? Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anvita and Dr. Gora again. And I'm sure there are a lot of takeaways from today's session. Thank you so much for your insightful uh, uh, strategies that uh, you have shared with us. Now, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Ashish Singh, founder of WM, for the vote of thanks. Welcome, Ashish. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anvita. Hi, Ashish. Thank you. Thank you. So, viewers, how was this webcast? I believe you all get benefited by the wisdom of and knowledge of Dr. Islam Gora and Dr. Anvita Prabhakara. Thank you. It's Thank a webcast. So, I was told it's a webcast. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's webcast. It's not webcast. World. It's webcast. World of Marketing is webcast. So, see, uh, today I'll take some more time to talk about uh, World of Marketing because many people say that I should. Uh, tell everyone that what is the story of world of marketing and to answer a few some common questions like uh, uh, why should uh, we join the world of marketing and uh, what is the global group or regional group what is the difference and uh, uh, a very common question how can you help me to find a job or investor so friends uh, it's a four years old group uh, it's community now which I started with my friend, classmate, and roommate, Mr. Dinesh Mahajan. Uh, started with a small WhatsApp group with a two or three members. And as I remember, uh, our founding members were Juby Antony, who is the uh, CMO for Godrej in Middle Eastern Africa right now. Shilpa, uh, Avijit Rana at that time. So I just remember two or three names at that time. So in four years, uh, the community expanded in 27 regional chapters. Yes, uh, 27 regional chapters. Uh, two global groups and approximately 5,000 plus members uh, all together in many members, and many groups, forums, and uh, networks. And people are, you know, they got benefited so far in terms of getting new jobs, new business opportunities, new contacts. And if nothing, they got some very good friends, very good friends, the two across the world. So, in one sense, we are a step ahead of what LinkedIn doing or what BNI or other networking groups do. Uh, guys, we are not a networking group. Yes, we are not a networking group. It is beyond networking. Mark my word, it is beyond networking. This is a friendship based on knowledge sharing and care for each other we stand for each other anyone can join world of marketing and become a leader and that's the freedom which world of marketing gives to everyone no other groups has that kind of a freedom that too within the guidelines and discipline i mean many marketing uh, groups become the corona awareness group in last two months we are still world of marketing and we talk about marketing only absolutely <laughs> absolutely i think it's definitely one where we are not having uh, corona updates 
uh, which we're getting, <laughs> oops, we're getting it from all our media, from all our TV. But I think in world of marketing, I have seen personally, uh, you know, being not really being an active participant, but being on the advisory board. Uh, we've, we've actually only spoken about marketing and how business will change, and of course, you know, anything else related to marketing. It, it's, it, there's no depressing news and no depressing forwards. <coughs> few more points <coughs> which I want to convey here. <coughs> Sorry. We celebrate infrastructure. <coughs> like today I was talking to Parichay. I was telling her, like, we celebrate imperfection. Yes, we don't need perfect ones. We celebrate imperfection. Like, <clears throat> this is followed by learnings. We enjoy uh, mistakes. We promote social and digital experiments. We call everyone to come join in uh, join <coughs> world of marketing social groups and do experiment, whatever you can. <clears throat> if you are not a master, not an expert, but just a learner, please join us. World of marketing belongs to you. If you are not a perfect one. Second point, like I, all, I keep on saying, world of marketing seeks knowledge and that brings out solutions. This is the place where brainstorming happens and we find out a solution. We challenge the status quo. Yes, we challenge the status quo. And uh, we develop a paradigm shift in marketing. Like today, we are doing what, what we are doing. Third point, world of marketing reduces social distancing. This is the need of the hour. Suppose I'm sitting in Pune and someone like me also sitting in, uh, suppose in Cape Town, like my friend Gad, we live the same life. I'm a marketer, he's a marketer. Same kind of a working atmosphere, same issues. And we try to use the same tools to find the, uh, find the uh, same solutions. So world of marketing bring us together. It reduces social distancing, but increase the friendship and relationship. Today, I have got so many friends from all across the world. And like me, my all core members like Naveen, uh, Rakhi, Dinesh, they all got very good friends from across the world. So world of marketing is the future. Yes, warm is the future. We have got some, uh, we have got some very interesting uh, plan for the future for the next uh, two, three weeks. Uh, we are working on a website and that will be showcase a uh, platform for, uh, of this community and it's in process and next week, maybe in the uh, next warm cast and next Sunday, we will uh, launch it. Uh, Locus is working on it. So we will, uh, we may launch it next week. We will give a special job, uh, job search assistant to all serious job seekers in this next webcast where they can promote their profile. It will be a kind of a, uh, you know, live resume or a live interview with the employers. We are working in on uh, and uh, we'll figure out something good for job seekers. Third thing, uh, we're also working on with some uh, marketing brain to develop formats, ready references, processes, uh, SOPs, presentations. For that, I request you all to give your contribution across the industries. I mean, this way we can have the SOPs, ready references, formats, solutions, or different industries. Like from oil and gas uh, industries, where my friend Hassan, he's from Tehran, he can contribute. In FMCG and distribution, uh, my friend Juvi Antony, he can contribute. For banking, Dinesh uh, Mahajan, he can contribute. Real estate, Yashraj or uh, Naveen Thakur, or, I mean, digital, uh, my friend from uh, Cameroon, Francis and Willie from Nigeria, he can contribute. So um, let's wrap it. And uh, so warm is the future. Uh, one last thing, which I do always, I have a list uh, to, you know, to say the thanks to all my uh, team members. First, Rakhi Furi, thanks. Uh, Rakhi is, uh, she is the managing uh, world of marketing operations uh, across the, uh, you know, uh, forums and groups. So thank you, Rakhi. Neelam, Neelam Sheikh for social media promotions. She is the silent, uh, silent warrior and uh, super mom. Thank you, uh, Neelam. Uh, Naveen uh, Thakur and uh, Shivalika for hosting this webcast and also uh, social media promotions. 
Parichay, uh, you are the backbone of world of marketing. You played a crucial role in defining strategies, tech support, working day and night with me for world of marketing. A big expectations from you. Yes, Raj and uh, Srijita Chattopadhyay. Thank you. Amazing contribution to make it so possible. Thank you, Yes and Srijita. Thank you. Lokesh, uh, for giving technical support, you managed well all the webcast and live show on Facebook. Great show, man. Thank you. Amisha and Parisha again. Amisha, you know, for graphics, all the creatives you have uh, seen across the uh, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, blah, blah, blah. Amisha did it. And uh, this promo video, which is actually made by Parichay and graphics by Amisha, as I said. Thank you, both of you. Uh, now, uh, my sponsor, our sponsor, World of Marketing sponsors, uh, Mr. Francis, uh, the founder of the Visionary Technology Cameroon. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Thank you for your support. Lokesh, for the website support. Thanks, Lokesh. Thank you. Arden Enterprises uh, from Pune. He is the BTL partner for World of Marketing. So thank you, uh, Vinayak, for uh, this BTL support. So thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll meet up uh, next uh, Sunday, or maybe the next Friday. Next Friday, then next Sunday. With the uh, from Friday and, uh, sorry? Why did you forget your name? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ashish. <laughs> so, let, me, let me thank Ashish for bringing all of us together. Thank you so much, Ashish, for this wonderful platform. Thank you. And Naveen, I can hear your voice now. Wow. Chalo, finally, 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank